Hi guys, I uh, hope you had a great Christmas and are enjoying Boxing Day. Uh, not sure if this video is going to make it out in time for Boxing Day, but it is Boxing Day and it's just gone 10 o'clock in the morning. It's surprising that I've managed to get out on time because today I planned uh, with the Bigfoot, which as you can see probably behind me is in the boot, I planned to go to Camber Sands in, uh, well it's on the border between Kent and East Sussex down on the south coast, uh, south east coast and I'm going to try and hunt out some dunes. Very difficult to find any dunes in the UK, uh, especially those where there isn't uh, a prying eye telling you to stop going on the dunes. Uh, most of them are generally protected areas or, or sites of special scientific uh, interest, triple SIs, so very tricky to kind of get on and use the dunes and the same kind of freedom and flexibility that you would have if you went somewhere like Dubai. Um, you may have seen from earlier videos that I have uh, cycled in the, uh, the desert in Dubai two or three times now on a fat bike, uh, but I thought today I would put the E fat bike to the test. Um, it may be a little bit wet and pappy, this sand, which will obviously make it heavier going, um, but let's see how a motor assists that process. So uh, looking forward to it. It's probably gonna take us about an hour, an hour and a half to get down to Canberra and uh, we'll try and take some decent footage and see how the bike performs. down to about 3-4 psi, the lowest I've ever used on a fat bike, and it seems to be working now, although you are using the battery maybe at 75 to 100%, but stay tuned, see some of the footage here, and uh, as long as you keep out of people's way, this is a great place to come for you on a fat bike, particularly if you've got an e-fat bike, you'll be left well alone, there's dunes for 3 or 4 miles, it's a great place to come, so I thoroughly recommend it, and have a look at the rest of the video.
managed to cut myself on sand and grass. It happens every time. I have no idea how that's happened. So of course I have no plasters, I have nothing. I just tried to fashion a, a plaster from some Velcro that I had, that didn't work. So uh, basically lost about a litre of blood from my knuckle somehow, so I'm going to have to use this glove as a makeshift tourniquet and continue filming like a trooper. for you. This is uh, Camber Golf Club that's looking north. Pan around to the end of the dune system and then at the uh, distance over there where the sunset is dropping down rapidly you could see the cliffs, the start of the cliffs from Hastings which then ultimately go on towards Eastbourne and form the South Downs and uh, as you can see, beautiful sunset there. Beautiful bike here. We'll come back to that in a second. Then you've got probably a couple of miles worth of dunes going that way, maybe more. You may be able to see that monolith in the background, which is uh, Dungeon SB power station. Uh, home to the only desert in England. It's actually shingle, but it's classified as a desert. And then these fantastic dunes, which have been hard, hard work today. Uh, don't let anybody tell you that an e-bike won't give you a workout, because I'm, I have to say, I'm dying on my ass if I'm uh, being honest. Anyway, onto the bike. First time I've taken it onto some serious uh, sand, i.e., soft sand, and that's for climbing and. For descending. Descending is never really going to be a problem regardless of what kind of quality of components you've got. You just switch the motor off and go for it. Pick a line and slide down. It's all good fun. But getting up is necessary and uh, the tyres are pretty basic on this but they do the job. Uh, they're not hugely knobbly so they're actually quite good in terms of rolling resistance over the soft stuff. It's just it doesn't really give you much traction. So you find yourself pumping the motor up to about 100% and uh, it's still a real struggle um, so you just shift it down to uh, somewhere in the middle of the cassette give you a bit more traction uh, but that cassette has got to go um, that's just the uh, the cheapo standard seven speed that shimano provide that's kind of whacked onto all budget bikes uh, front derailleur is going to go going to stick to a uh, single speed uh, sorry single uh, crank on the front or cog i should say uh, excuse my lack of diction and grammar because I'm knackered, uh, but that will go. Uh, so basically, an all, all new drivetrain. I'll probably stick the nine speed on and derailleur that goes with it from the Carrera, um, the Vulcan e spec, which uh, is an Olivio system. Um, grips great, uh, motor performs well. Frame is a little bit small for me, it's probably a, a large, medium to large, so actually suits my girlfriend better. Uh, I'm six foot, you probably would suit someone about 5'10 or below, uh, but it's good, it feels compact. I might actually go against my uh, my cardinal rule and get a stem which is even longer than that. Usually I go for very, very short stem, wide bar combo to give you a bit more uh, agile handling. I'll go with wider bars, these bars are way too short, uh, something funky in colour, and I'll increase the size of the stem. Uh, other than that, pretty much everything's going to stay the same. Brakes, really good. Worked out why there were um, cables going to the controller from the brake. And that just basically, as you can see here, shows you... See that warning sign? Basically shows you that you're braking. A bit pointless when you're off-road, but it's quite a handy little feature. And uh, other than that, battery life, you know, been on soft dunes all day. And um, we're at about 55-60% having done six miles. <laughs> 